look at that. That's a clapboard. Welcome back, everybody. It's season five, episode two of the Tripping on Bricks podcast. Today, we're going to be doing something a little bit fun that we've never done before. Um, and in current events, the SAG after strike is completed. So we thought today we would talk about our letterbox, look at some reviews, and then judge your own movie, your top four, your movie reviews. Mm. Yeah, so we're yeah. going to we're gonna do that today. Get ready um, to be judged. We're gonna we're gonna judge so hard. Uh, I'm Abby. I am one of the co-hosts of the podcast, and I'll pass it over. I would be Tim. I am the other co-host of the podcast. And I'm Lily. I work at Wavelength, and I really love movies. We love movies. Expert. We're all experts. Um, Meaning we we're all have really letterbox. annoying about this. And they're actually called films. <laughs> they're called movies. Anywho. <laughs> all right. So. I think we're gonna start off first, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about our own letterbox, our top four, because for those that don't have letterbox, you can choose top fours. It's basically a movie rating app for pretentious people. So or people who just really love a film. Uh, before we, we before we, we say, all use it in the toxic way though. Yes. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I use it in the toxic way. Before we get into it, one icebreaker, I guess, is what a, what's the last movie that everyone watched? I last night watched Bottoms, Queen. Um, which is a movie from this summer. Uh, yeah, I it was it was good. It was good. What should I get my rating? Yeah, you can oh, yeah. oh okay, yeah. A live uh, review. I so on Letterboxd, I gave it a four point five stars out of five. Mm, it dang. felt like it was missing something, like the plot. Like I don't know, I just felt like there was a piece missing. Mm. Love AO though. Love AO. Um the bear. I'm a big the bear fan. Mm-hmm. So like obviously love Do you AO. follow her on Letterboxd? She has funny. I reviews. do, and she Great lives reviews. really good reviews of movies. I it was really funny though, I will say. Like, it's just a funny, good class. It feels like an early 2000s film. Ooh, that's mm-hmm. fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like My, a raunchy. Yeah. And that's, and that's coming back a little bit. It like, is. Yes. Jennifer Lawrence, No exactly. Hard Feelings. Yep. No, I need two to movies that. I haven't seen, but two movies I heard are good. And I will get around no to No Hard them. Feelings is on Netflix. I just recently okay, watched it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Last okay. movie I watched and reviewed was A Haunting in Venice. Oh, the I heard about Christie that. The adaptation nice. that came out around a couple months ago, maybe September. Damn. Um, it was pretty good. It was uh, sc- actually like kind of scary, which I wasn't expecting because I was just expecting like murder mystery stuff. Mm. But I think uh, all the movies like that are like a little bit plastic to me. Mm. I'm not a huge fan of the Poro uh, Agatha Christie stuff. Can I ask you a question? Mm-hmm. Did you like Murder on the Orient Express? More than this one. Okay, oh, uh, that's because, my favorite. Because, is that the same? Or because yeah. Murder on the Orient Express came out in like 2018, I want to say. Mm. I did watch and that. I remember seeing that and being like, "This is an incredible remake of that adaptation." And then I saw Death on the Nile. Sucks. Sucked. Ooh, I watched that when I had COVID. It was bad. <laughs> that was a fever <laughs> it dream. It was. It is a bad. fever dream mm-hmm. in a it bad way. It was just like I felt like the cat. It, it, it felt like Knives Out too to me. It's like yeah, it's mm. it's exactly like Knives Out, and also it's just like everyone it in the movie is kind of just like the actor like mm. Tina Fey's in this one and so I'm just like the entire time like she's Tina been, Fey's she's doing been getting the into serious thing That's yeah she's all right at it I guess well because she was on murder only murders in the building mm. and she played like uh, which is oh yeah funnier. I just started watching that actually good show good show mm-hmm. what'd you rate it out of three out of five mm. I said yeah. pretty good like just like all the recent Agatha Christie adaptations there's something missing I don't know um, I've never been so annoyed by a camera because they do a lot of like whoosh, twisty Ew. stuff mm. and like really like sharp zoom in and like s- upside down shots. And it's like, if I watched that it in the movie theater, me. I would have got motion sickness. Yeah. It was really annoying. Shout out Phoebe Bridgers. <laughs> Shout out Phoebe Bridgers. <laughs> that was not funny. Um, okay, so I started watching movie last night, but I didn't finish it. So does that count? Yes. It does? Yeah. Uh, sure. Okay. Do you ever review it? <laughs> I didn't review it yet because no I haven't finished it. Okay, then maybe do like the next one. Okay, so the most recent You're movie mid, I watched, um, I haven't watched a movie in quite a few days because I was at a conference, but I recently rewatched The Intern with Anne Hathaway <gasps> and Robert really De Niro. Good. Lovely. Okay, I will say rewatching it was not as good as when I watched it for the first time. I remember I went to Target and I used to have like a bin of like movies, like $5 movies that mm-hmm. I'd buy and I, I bought that and I thought it was really good. I, I thought it was still like charming, but I think it was I think it was still missing something, you know. I just love Anne Hathaway. That's yeah, Nancy Myers too, isn't it? Mm, I don't know. Like, of the holiday and all that stuff. Oh, she's awesome. oh, mm. the, the lady with the famous kitchens. Yeah, that know? makes sense that she she made it, like she produced it. 
I don't. I, that's see. what I thought. I don't know. Nancy Myers. Yep. yep. They're sense. correct. Um, I rated it a three out of five, and my comment on that is: old gentle men make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> Robert De Niro not being an asshole. <laughs> Very true. Uh, so that's the last movie that I watched. Gentle men. Okay, mm-hmm. I think it's time to go through our top four. So my top four. Um, I don't like serious films like Tim all the time. I'm not pretentious in my letterbox. My first one is National Treasure. <laughs> Do you want to like read your review for it? Oh, yeah, totally. I'll read my <laughs> review like that. Uh, living out the plot of this movie is on my bucket list, and I gave it a four out of five stars. Damn. I love National Treasure. Wait, you didn't even give it five yeah, stars? Yeah, like five stars <laughs> it, your favorite movie? It's like, okay, I give it four stars purely because Nicolas Cage, I don't know, something about him. And... I also have pre-existing like things about it. I the sequel pisses me off, and I always so I always watch the first one, and I'm always mad at the end because I know what's about to happen. Wait, something about him in a good way or a bad way? Bad way, like I don't know, just creepy, uh, kind of creepy vibe. Like I don't know, creepy vibe, but like it's kind of funny. But I like he's really, like yeah. funny. Like I like him. Um, yeah. So Abby, you go. Um, my favorite Nick Cage movie is The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Oh, gay. Put that there. <laughs> <Yay>. Okay. The, <laughs> the, <laughs> Your first top four. <laughs> I, it's just, the Sorcerer's Apprentice. I, I'm just going to completely deadpan like all the jokes you make. What's your first of your top four? Like, <laughs> <purpose. laughs> okay. <laughs> the first of my top four is Secret Life of Walter Mitty. I think that movie is actually mm-hmm. amazing. Mm-hmm. I watched it the night before I turned 21. Like literally like two minutes before mm-hmm. and like I almost started crying. I don't cry at movies, but that movie just has amazing cinematography, an amazing soundtrack, an amazing plot. Just everything that you want. Ben Stiller, Kristen, Kristen Wiig, uh, the Ooh. guy from Parks and Rec. Yeah. Whatever. Andy? Adam Scott. Adam Scott. Oh, Adam, mm-hmm, Adam Scott. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then, I mean, Sean, Sean Connery is in it. Great Jack Johnson song on the soundtrack. No. Jack Johnson, really? Mm-hmm. The yeah, the mm. Pina Colada song. My dad. Oh, oh yeah. The, oh, and the, Jose Gonzalez. Yeah. yeah. Jose Gonzalez, amazing. My dad, the mm-hmm. only songs he had on his phone for a long time was the Walter Mitty soundtrack. Oh, that's so sweet. That's, like, sweet. that's very yeah. Washington. Um, if if you are watching this right now, listen to the song Heartbeats by Jose Gonzalez. That is a fantastic song. That's really I've actually song. never seen The Secret, that movie. It's I'm good. waiting to like so a pivotal good. life moment. I was told oh, I yeah. shouldn't watch I, <laughs> oh, wow. I uh, was going to have the Clementine cake for my 21st birthday, but then we kind of messed up the recipe and didn't have it. But, <laughs> that's you know, the, ambitious. In, the intention was there yeah. to do the Clementine nice. cake. So I love that movie. Ben Stiller, I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. I've written over you like that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he should be scared or, <laughs> or the rest. end. Yeah. Or, I don't know. I don't know. All right. My first. Um, oh yeah, this is so movie cool. is Before Sunrise. Uh, Ethan Hawke. It's uh, from the nineties. They, the main characters meet on a train to Paris or wherever, and then they fall in love, but they have to leave. And it's very cute. It's very hopeless romantic. Wait. I know. It was a woman that directed it, right? Or was it um, Richard Linklater? It's Richard Linklater. Uh, of course. Classic Richard Linklater. Richard, written by a woman. Mm-hmm. He, he a woman. is written by a woman. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love it so much. I am obsessed with all three of the movies. This is this is the second That's one a take. in um, the, the three series. The series of three. It's before Sunrise. Oh, this is the first one. This is be- There's Before Sunrise, Before Sunset, and Before Midnight. And Before Midnight's very sad, but it's still very good. And my review for this one. Oh, Before Midnight is about the, it's it's Owen Wilson, right? No, no, no. no. That's mind. like the shitty so remake. Sorry. Or yeah. No, 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 no. That's Midnight in Paris. Oh, it oh. is. Which I... was on my top four, but not anymore because. Something about that. Movie. Reasons. Anyway, okay. Do I do my next no, one? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, read sorry. I read your review. Tim, keep going. I just love the idea of love so much. And this movie is such a realistic movie mm-hmm. portrayal of great romantic connection. I just love it. I got a comment on it too. And it's from a random person. Oh, that's kind of nice. That, yeah. Wa- I I watched that movie earlier this year and I was like, fuck, this is so like human. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's not like an overarching plot, but it's just like, oh, yeah. it's the people. Oh, it's, and it's so like, good. I have all of them mm-hmm. on DVD. So oh, I don't sweet. know. Mm-hmm. I'll if lend own, it to you. If you own a DVD or a CD now, it means you like truly love that piece of art. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it just, Why yeah. I have Shrek 2 on DVD. <laughs> That's fair. I wa- that, <laughs> that was that. one of my most recently reviewed movies on oh, Letterboxd. Oh, nice. Um, okay, so my next movie, uh, this is where things start to get really unhinged. Um, but it gets better, I promise. My next, uh, my next movie is Tangled. I gave it five stars, and my review is iconic in all caps. Brave was good, but this movie is literally amazing. Also, Mandy Moore and what's his face as the guy, which I think I'm talking about. 
the Zachary Levi. The Zachary Levi, yeah. Good pull. And then I put also, I really love the horse and the gecko, which Aww. that review stands to this day. I will watch that movie when I need like to really. Mm-hmm. I don't know. My roommates and me, we love to sing, so we like to put a little like Disney soundtrack on, and that is my Disney soundtrack of choice. I would say Disney movies heavily heavily rely for me the quality of disney movies are directly linked to the songs really? and how funny the animals who can talk are right i think those well, are hey, the two factors that the, you really need the thing about tangled is the horse and the gecko do not speak but they, oh, they are don't. hilarious and i always loved them as See? a kid and i and also i just have like this really vivid memory of seeing that movie in the theater. And for some reason, my mom, like, I think it was like a $2 movie in the summer. Mm. And my mom was like, we just have to go to this. You'll love it. And I never, like, loved Rapunzel because the real story is sad. Like, it's very sad. The Rapunzel, like, mm. becomes Long blind. Hair. And then she, like, and then the prince becomes blind. And it's very devastating. But Tangle is just such a beautiful adaptation. And I love the color scheme. Music it's good. So pretty. And music good. <laughs> Animals funny. I just love it. I just love it. <laughs> anyway, Abby, your turn. All right, my next one. Also, I wanna I wanna clarify that I don't put any of the Star Wars movies on here because that's just a given. Okay, that's that's all I'm gonna say. Because I think okay. one of them. Okay. Some this is us... my hating on Abby podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us have never seen them. <laughs> I'm What's just wrong kidding. with you? What's wrong with you? Okay, um, okay, the next movie I don't actually have a review for because I just like had it in my favorites. I guess I Can just... you make a review on the spot? Yeah, okay, so my next movie is The Way Way Back. It is a cute little indie movie. It has Sam Rockwell in it, Maya Rudolph, Steve Carell, Tony Collette. Um, it is really good. This was this was the first movie that I realized like not all stories have happy endings. Mm. Like it was it was, like I remember watching this when I was like eight years old because my family's like let's rent a movie. It was very good. Um, five out of five. If I could give the, I don't. Yeah. Okay. I'll read. I'll read the thing. Over the course of the summer break, a teenager comes into his own thanks, in part to friendship he strikes up with one of the park's managers, which it's still, eh, it's not really a great, We should like, bring summer, back but... the renaissance of, like, teenage indie movies mm-hmm. that, like, like, you guys remember Hoot? Oh, oh. It, oh, okay. Hoot. And it has, like, Logan Lerman and Brie Larson, and they, like, are <sighs> trying to save these owls, and it was kind of, like, a low-budget movie, but, like... It felt like a t like an indie version, an indie movie for me as a mm. teenager, like kid, and I feel like that kind of has a similar vibe. I feel like mm. The Edge of Seventeen could be on my list. Mm. That's pretty similar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just love I a love good that. indie. It, it's like, and it's coming of age, but not in the way you would expect it to be. Like he learns how to stand up for himself, mm-hmm. basically. Also, like hilarious, and also and like kind of a night mm-hmm. ruin, ruiner when you have a family movie night and you rent a movie <laughs> and it has a sad ending. Yeah, <laughs> it's so just sad. like yeah. no, your parents. Are everyone like, walks away Ooh. and they're like, no one's really talking to each other. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Anna Sophia Robb is also in it, and she's really good in it. Um, nice. Yeah, if I could give one. Oh, okay. Here's my review. Sam Rockwell, I am coming for you. Steve Rowe. Wink, wink. <laughs> Anyways, that's my I second one. I've got a long list of people to take care of. <laughs> that's my second one. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Follow it up, Tim. My second movie is one I had talked about on the podcast recently, actually. It's Scream. Um, and ah. I've mostly said my piece. I just love it so much. I said this movie shapes what the '90s were like in my mind. Just the way everyone dresses and acts is so cool to me. I don't know why. Also, Matthew Lillard is really killing it here. Haha, <laughs> killing it because mm-hmm. I'm not gonna spoil the movie. We already but, did. Um, <laughs> yeah, we did last week or last time apparently. <laughs> um, but yeah, always had a little man crush on Matthew Lillard. Um, Fair enough. This is all just good stuff. Plus good, you, scary, good scary, good scary, scary liked- stuff. Yeah. Have you yeah. seen the new FNAF movie? Is he in it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I have to watch it then. Yeah, oh, that's you awesome. Have to. He's back. You have to watch Matthew it. Lillard's and I'll so have back. to I'll have to show you a TikTok edit that I saw the other day. I love I'll be so down. Matthew <laughs> Lillard for one reason. And it's that he Hunkiness. not only plays like Shaggy in the Scooby Doo like live mm-hmm. version, but he plays it in like the animated one too, <laughs> and that's so cute. Like he loves the role so much that he's just like, I'll do it. Mm-hmm. I'll so my so my favorite Scooby Doo rendition also has him playing Shaggy, mm-hmm. oh. and I'm like, that's so cute. It's like, he's like he is Shaggy. It's canon. He's Shaggy. He's Shaggy. Also, um, there's a movie called SLC Punk where he plays like a spiky haired. <gasps> I've seen edits. It's really good. That, spiky yeah. hair, spiky hair punk guy, and but he's in Salt Lake City, and everyone's Mormon. Um, and it's it's really Ooh. really good. Yeah, that sounds good. You should watch it. Mm-hmm. My next movie is um, When Harry Met Sally. I give Classic. it four stars. 
I don't know why I gave it four stars. I think I'd give it five. You're stingy with the five I am stars. stingy with my stars. I really want to like not give five stars to everything. All of my movies so far have been five stars, mm-hmm. just by the way. I said, it's unfair how good that sweater looks in that one scene. I wish someone would run across like five blocks in New York for me. Mm. I just, it's so it's cute. Bad. In the in the scheme of like, um, okay, well, so like when Harry Met Sally, Sleepless in Seattle, and then um, You've Got Mail are all made by the same person. Nora and, Ephron. Mm. They're all directed by the same person, too. Rob who, Reiner. Yes. Thank you, Tim. Director. And yeah. um, and I think in my ranking of the three, Harry Met Sally is top, You've Got Mail, and then Sleep This in Seattle. And I think some people would say that is an interesting opinion to have, but I just do not like Sleep This in Seattle. And I think I that don't also when Harry Met Sally is the standout among the three, like it's just a very, very cute story, and Meg Ryan is so good in it. I was almost Meg Ryan for Halloween. Mm. And it's just really, it's so beautiful. And the end is so sad. Mm-hmm. Like, she's like, I want someone to know me. And then it's just, yeah, it's just, it's so good. That sweater must have got sweaty on his run. That sweater but he's is so good. <laughs> he's so good. And it's so funny, like, and it has such a crazy cast because it has, um, uh, who, Star Wars, the Princess Leia. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's Carrie in Fisher. it. What? Carrie yeah. Fisher's in it. She's, she's so, moms. she's funny. And she's so funny in it. Um, and the wheel, I always, whenever someone talks about coffee tables, for some reason, I think about the, the wheel top coffee table that they like throw out in the one scene. Mm. Yeah. The fantastic movie. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool. I think that movie is pretty good. It's pretty, <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> okay. Uh, my next movie is The Little Prince. Um, I am surprised that I actually have an animated movie on here, um, because I, there's, it, there's too many options to choose from, but I think... Again, it encapsulates everything that I want in a movie, whether it comes to cinematography, the soundtrack, the plot. Like, it's such a good kids movie, but it makes me think, like, watching it as an adult, it makes me think about horrible existential things. And, like, it basically is just like, well, you can still be a kid when you're an adult, and, like, you shouldn't lose that charm. Uh, and it's based off of, like, La Petite Prince or the, the mm. French, yeah, yeah, the French uh, story, little kid story. Um, it's so good. And I would even. I feel like I should update my letterbox because I would I might even put Soul up there because it also kind of tackles with the same Solo? Soul. Oh. That mm. movie is amazing. If mm. either of if you haven't watched haven't it, seen you need it. to watch I it. I came out in a bad time for watched me. Elemental. <laughs> I hate ago. that movie. That's made by the was same people. It's a really bad movie. I was asleep for all of uh, it. So. The commercials looked really, really bad. Yeah. Um, my letterbox review for The Little Prince is forever an adult teenage girl that will never grow up and have childlike whimsy until I die. <laughs> this This <laughs> review is giving like a couple weeks ago, me and some people realized that we will never be a teenage girl again. And that was, like, yeah. so sad. No, watch... And that's what this review is making me think Watching of. that movie, it just makes you think a lot about, like, who you were as a kid and, like, I don't know, just... Not that... Like, it wasn't necessarily, like, being creative, but it's just you, like, not... Basically, it's, like, anti-capitalist propaganda, to be honest. Mm. Real. Just a little bit, but, and like... so is this podcast. <laughs> We are anti-capitalists. <laughs> uh, but it's it's very good. It's, j- yeah, just basically finding your inner child again, and it's very cute. Oh. All, right. All right. My next one's The Royal Tenenbaums. This oh, is, yeah. Uh, Best West movie. The only one, uh, the only movie on my list so far that didn't get five stars, it got four and a half, but I, I'm going to, like, nix myself from my past Tim here and give it five stars right after the podcast is done. Why did you get four and a half? Um, I don't know. I feel like maybe I was just, like, this is Wes Anderson. It's not like that cool to like Wes Anderson movies because everyone does. Everyone loves Wes Anderson movies. Yeah. It's awesome. It's yeah, awesome. it's awesome. And this is like, this is what I want New York to look like. This is what I want people to act like, like being like sassy and stuff in New York. This is how I want people to deliver jokes with just like total deadpan. Um, the like pace people talk with everything about it is mm-hmm. just so, I mean, I think it's not five stars or it wasn't five stars at the time because Wes Anderson went on to do so many movies by the time I got to this one that so many movies that I watched before I got to this one that it was like all kind of sticky for me, but this was like the first time mm. that I saw this happen, um, in a movie, like just like the way he frames things and the way he like writes characters is all like a little bit the same in all his movies. Mm. But I think this is when he does it the best. And I think it's so funny and so sweet and so sad. And I love the cast. I would agree with that. I think Hot Take, this is his best movie. I definitely I think do this like is the best Fantastic movie. 
Fantastic I, Mr. Fox. Fantastic but, like, Mr. Fox is my top that, list. Movie. The Royal Tenenbaums, Bombs, it just it brings me in like no other. I don't want to live in a hole anymore. That's sweet. It's just so I just like Ben Stiller's character in like, and Owen Wilson. I yeah. oh have my God. been hot take. I was a little bit disappointed by a recent Wes Anderson movie. Um, oh, I just, Asteroid City? No, no, the one before that, uh, the French. Oh, French Dispatch. Oh, yeah, yeah. me too. Was, I liked I, it, like, but I know a lot of people didn't. love it. Yeah. Like, it wasn't, mo- a lot of Wes Anderson's movies I watch, and I'm like, this is amazing. And this then that one, I was like, eh. Mm. Have you seen his first, oh, sorry, were you going to say something? I was just going to read my review. Oh, you go. oh read, your, read your review. Okay. Wes Anderson doesn't miss. That's it. He doesn't. Mm-hmm. That's so true. This is his best, but he doesn't miss. That's so true. His first movie, Bottle Rocket, I watched that. Because I, I do like a movie night with a couple of my friends, and we, we did a Wes Anderson night. And we watched Bottle Rocket. Dignan. And then, what was the other one we watched? It was Fantastic Mr. Fox. I also like, um, what's the one about the people, and they, they're like on the island? Isle of Dogs? No, no. Oh, Moonrise Kingdom? Moonrise Kingdom. Oh, that yeah, was that one's yeah. sweet. I like Moonrise cute. Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, my last one. Last review. Okay, so my last review is actually my probably my favorite movie um it's called this is where i leave you mm. uh my rev- i gave it a five stars and my review is there are no words to describe this movie and do it justice truly like i think that everyone should watch that movie if you think of yourself as a person who likes a comedy like that movie's honestly really funny it has an amazingly funny cast it's um jason bateman tina fey adam driver it's one mm. of adam driver's like earlier films i think all the funniest and people they're really good in it and it handles like really not funny topics because it's about like grief and how do you handle grief and not like just like the grief of like someone passing away but like the grief of like losing something in life and I think like it's really interesting and there's one scene in it where Adam Driver tells Tina Fey like uh they were never my parents like you were my parent Mm. and as an older sister like that really hit me in a place like i don't know i just like have always been like that's really like i don't know that's it's something that it's so sweet Mm. and i would highly recommend anyone watching it it's beautiful i think i've seen that like a while ago and i don't remember but like i do remember in my head i think my dad was on the the couch like watching it and i like came in and i watched it but i need to it's so good like honestly it's so Mm. good the premise is hilarious it has um fantastic like a fantastic cast like but be besides jason bateman tina fey right. and driver because it's um oh this really who's i can't remember her name they're all funny they're all really good like it's just amazing and it's hilarious but also very sad mm-hmm. it'll make you think it'll make you think <laughs> yeah that's my last movie all right so my last movie to I'll no one surprise Let's is go. la la land um i don't have a review on this one either for some reason. It doesn't need one. It doesn't need one. It yeah, it's just itself. it speaks for itself. And I remember I watched this movie back when it first came out and I thought, I don't know, it's weird. I feel like I appreciate the movie way more now mm. as an adult. The reason why I think that it is so good is because of that last scene. And I won't spoil it for people that have not seen it, but it is the last scene that really just encapsulates everything of like what I love about that movie. I mean, I guess I'm kind of spoiling when I say this, but like, I think we're going to spoil movies. It, it's, yeah. It's, it's the whole idea of just, um, you, you'd rather, what's the whole thing? It's like, I would have like rather have loved than lost than to have not loved at all, you know? And it's very bittersweet. And just like the look that they give each other at the end of the movie will make me like tear up because. It is just so like it's kind I don't know of like on in my mind, La La Land. I mean, I don't think they're the same level, but it kind of has similar like vibes or a message of like Five Hundred Days of Summer, mm. because it's mm. like I would rather have like loved you and then lost you, yeah, than like not loved you at all. Mm-hmm. And like that one, I don't know. I just that for some reason in my mind, those two like kind of. I can see together. that. It's it's the understanding that both of them. Like, when they ended up, like, ending things, like, they knew it was for a specific reason, they can look back on that and still see each other and still know that, like, the love is there even though they're not together. Like, that's the biggest thing that really gets me. Um, and also Damien Chazelle, as a director, is friggin' awesome. Um, love his work. And if I could rate this, or if I could if I could say one uh, review, Ryan Gosling, I am coming for you. Oh. Shots That's fired. a great... <laughs> um, little segue because my last movie is also by Damien Chazelle. Oh, yeah. It's Whiplash. Fantastic. Gr- amazing. It's about a jazz drummer and his like tyrant of a teacher at jazz school. Um, it's got Miles Teller, young Miles Teller. It's got J.K. Yeah. Simmons oh, doing his yeah. thing. Still scares me. Doing, he still <laughs> scares me also. Um, yeah. 
I grew up <laughs> playing a lot of basketball and having a lot of coaches, and this is very transferable to that world. Um, it's all pretty relatable and scary and I'll read my review because it sets, starts out saying, I feel seen. This is the closest thing to a perfect movie that's come out since I've been able to think. So, Whoa. yeah. Um, that's a crazy And I, I stand by that. I think I started being able to think around 2012. <laughs> um, and hopefully that continues into the future. But that's good. It's going to take a real, real good movie to knock that off the list. Because mm-hmm. the rest of mine are all 90s movies. Um, Tim, you have something to share with the rest of us. Why? Yeah. Uh, so Tim is a little bit letterbox famous. Yeah, Tim yeah. like revealed to us um, like five minutes before we started filming that like it's kind of it's kind of crazy. It's a little I have crazy. two thousand two hundred eighty five followers on Letterbox, um, and it's because when I first got the app, I followed like literally everybody I oh. saw. So oh. I was I was I was farming for I was follow backs because you do have mm-hmm. follow. Yeah, like I spent people. like. I was in like sophomore year of high school and I was like, you know, it'd be fun if I was just like a famous movie reviewer. So that's I, cool. You could be a movie, a movie reviewer. Well, you have a lot of followers. Yeah, exactly. That's why I, that's, really- that's why I built the audience. Yeah. I said, you guys are all gonna follow me back and then you're gonna become my fans. Be really. Fans. And be two thousand of them did. And <laughs> one of my most <laughs> recent reviews got one like, <laughs> but um one from twenty twenty got like 95 whoa Dang. 92 the screen one got 20, 92 so i've fallen off but that was a big deal but we up though yeah we actually um we I'll actually have some other people's top fours wait are we gonna talk about the comments our own litter box oh yeah yeah review yeah comments. yeah oh, i don't leave review comments you don't no. i leave review comments i always have to. you just rate movies mm-hmm. that's crazy because i'm Okay, well, so, um, Abby, I don't know if you've seen... You saw Barbie this summer. Did you yes, rate it? I did rate it. Do you want to compare Barbie sure. ra- ratings? Because okay, I did, too. Okay, well, <laughs> you didn't leave a Wait, comment. I didn't leave a comment. Question, though. Did you guys see Oppenheimer? Yeah. No. <sighs> I did. Okay. Good. I did not. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I, okay, I just didn't really awesome. want to sit and watch a movie about a guy who's, like, sad, sad about oh building God. a bomb for three hours. I mean, I know it had, like, crazy cameos, I guess, I but... I just didn't really want to. These are the amount of my friends on Letterboxd that have. Yeah, follow Abby. 12 people that have watched this. So I'm going to read my Barbie review, and then um, if Abby can find it, Abby will read her. I reviewed it twice because I I did Barbenheimer twice. Mm. Okay. So I got to find it. So my review, I gave it five stars. I love Greta Gerwig. That makes sense. I gave it five stars. I said, in 2019, I went to the theater to see Little Women, and I walked out in tears because I felt such a strong connection to the women in that. Were, that were portrayed, dot, dot, dot. Today I sobbed for the last half hour of the Barbie movie and cried all the way out to my car until the point of my mom asking if I could see enough to drive home. It was so beautiful and made me feel so, oh wait, there's more. And made me feel so nostalgic about being a kid and the montage was too much for me to handle. Mm. I'm a very nostalgic person and I know that. And I'm also a very like emotional person, which I don't think is bad. I like being that and I know and like Little Women in 2019 was like just it was crazy I I like didn't relate to it because that would be crazy if I related to like the plot or something (laughs) but I really like loved the women in it and I felt like a very strong connection to some of them and like the things that they go through um and then I saw Barbie and it reminded me of it because I was sitting in the theater and I was like this is so much about like this is such like a Greta Gerwig has a way of like portraying women that make you feel like you know them and like and you are them and that is that's beautiful. I love that. Have you seen Frances Ha? I mm. You probably really like that. Wants me to watch it. What are the? She stars in it. Oh I yeah, know. she didn't direct it. No, she did. Oh, she did. Oh no, it was yeah. that Noah Noah Bombach or Bomb Bombach. Whatever his name is. I think yeah. she. I think she directed oh, okay. it too, actually. Because she also. I think she did. She. Mm. I don't know if she directed Twentieth Century Woman, but that movie's she's in that, and that movie yeah. is really good. My my mom keeps saying that I should watch movies that she she's did. the best. Mm-hmm. She's awesome. One of the I think I'm gonna put this out there. One of the like future like best directors not even oh, like future but like current right but now. i think like i think you could say like she is she could 
hypothetically be what Martin Scorsese is. I also, when there was like, it was National Cinema Day sometime this summer and t- movie tickets were four bucks. So I went mm-hmm. to see Lady Bird on like big screen Ooh. and that, like yeah. watching that, like, cause I watched it in high school, but then watching it again in college, like really changed my perception about a I lot would, of the Greta stuff. Gerwig has such a way of like. I also have like, a DVD of that. Hmm? Lady Bird. I have a DVD of Lady, oh, Lady love Bird. love it. Yeah. Greta Gerwig has a really in, like interesting way of like, uh, like portraying women's relationships with mm-hmm. other women no, and especially I, yeah, a mother-daughter relationship mm. so yeah when i went to see barbie with my mom i definitely graduated. Aww. it's been lacking in cinema i mean just women directors in general i could get on my soapbox about that but yeah. i'm not going to what's your review of barbie <laughs> basically what you said but into one word all i said was for both reviews women <laughs> with a heart <laughs> women. and i rated it four stars I either leave a long review or a short review. Mm-hmm. I said Greta Gerwig, don't miss, and I also said four stars. There we go. There we go. Okay, what's your Oppenheimer review though? And what your your yeah. four and a half stars? I said just amazing. Nolan's best since Memento. I also four and a half stars, and I watched it twice. The first one I said, Roger Heffley, I see you. <laughs> Oh, because you're he... so direct with the actors in your reviews. <laughs> you really are. <laughs> Call them you're out. Calling them out. <laughs> That's true. And then I think, let's see, what's the second one? Oh, <laughs> again, another one. Watching this for the second time, and I still got jump scared when Josh Peck showed up. <laughs> it is My... a jump scare. Yeah. Very sudden. <laughs> what is we got? Can you guys find your first letterbox review? Oh, I bet my, mine is so official. My first letterbox review is Harry Potter, oh the Prisoner God. of Azkaban. I get five stars, and I said, Teenage Harry and Hermione were everything I wanted to be at 13. Real. Mine, wait, did you have anything else to say that? Mm-mm. Mine is actually Whiplash. Oh, it's Whiplash. Great. I rated it five stars. I rewatched this on October 20th, 2021, because I did not start using Letterbox until a couple of years ago. And my quote, here's an Easter egg, excellent, brilliant, show-stopping, but not quite my tempo. <laughs> Wait, how are you finding all yours? You gotta scroll. You go down on uh, the Okay. What's your guys' favorite Vamp. review you've ever left? Um, ooh, that's Wait, hard. we'll wait for Tim. We'll wait, Tim, Tim, find, find yours. Mine. Favorite review I've ever left? Yeah, find your... Oh, my... F- oh. oh, well, I found Actually, my... Actually, no, my... F- well, wait. I found my, my review of Little Women, <laughs> and it's Greta is too powerful, and no one should even try to stop her. I was mm. right. Real. Oh, I found my Before Sunrise. Uh, it's I 100% believe they didn't have a script and just told Ethan Hawke to speak, and this is what we got. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> okay. uh, my first review is Psycho 2 from 2020, and it's long. I said, it's better than you'd think. While the movie has a deeply flawed acting and what is, in my opinion, an unsatisfying ending, it holds up as a quality sequel to one of the greatest movies of all time. None of the scares seem cheap, and the central mystery is well hidden, keeping the audience on their toes throughout its runtime. You can tell I thought I was a movie reviewer. Wow. That's very intricate. I appreciate that. (laughs) That's the longest review. They just keep getting shorter, like, every Mm, year that passes. mm -hmm. My favorite review I've ever left. I'm trying to find a good one. Well, it's, like, complicated because, like, so many movies I love these movies I love. I've reviewed too many to have a favorite. Um... It's probably a tie between my Sound of Music review, my Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone review, and my About Time review. Are you British? British. Am I British? Are you British? I'm not. Sorcerer's Stone. Um, about Time, I said I gave it four stars. Ooh, I, I didn't even watch that. Okay, I gave it four stars because it makes me so sad towards the end that I am pissed at the end of the movie. Like Five I'm like, stars. this is so, I'm pissed. I'm sad. I, four stars. About Time was in my top four for a long time. It, because it's so good. I need to watch it's it. So, have you never seen it? You're going to cry. It's on my watch list. <gasps> okay, well, so my review is my review is a quote, and it says, I just try to live every day like I deliberately like I deliberately came back to this one day. And if you've watched the movie, you know. If you know, you know. And then I my thing I said, and then there's two crying emojis, and then I said, don't watch this movie if you aren't ready to cry. Mm. Mm. Um, Sometimes you watch a movie like, you know for the purpose cry. of making you cry. That's a good yeah. one. And then I reviewed The Sound of Music. The Sound of Music is probably one of my favorite musicals of all time. And I gave that five stars. And I said, I think the part of this movie we all forget about is that in the end, they were escaping Nazis. True. (laughs) It's because it's like four hours long. No one ever makes it to the end. It's like an hour and a half. It's a fantastic movie. It's It's good, but it's very long. It's a fantastic movie. Um, Okay. I I, I don't know if this is my favorite one, but I think it's funny. Uh, This was Nope. Um, Never thought I'd be afraid of a flying saucer that looked like a butthole. Yeah. 
No likes on that one. I also have a really good review of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Two stars. Philosopher. It's my least favorite Harry Potter movie. And I said, so you're telling me the spirit of Tom Riddle took control of the back of that dude's head. Oh, really? <laughs> For real. <laughs> I agree, actually. The back like, of that dude's that head. It doesn't really make sense. So he randomly chose a person, <laughs> hypothetically, hilarious. like of his followers, and then he was like, the part I'm going to take control of, his head, the back of it, not his brain. He couldn't like take like his body. He had to like, <laughs> like take control of the back of his head. What? That's Come on, man. I've never thought of that. That's really funny. <laughs> Come on. I don't like that movie. <laughs> you know... I just like the brightness of that movie. And like it, it has like a warmness to it, like the first two movies. And then it gets No, moody. it definitely does, but like I think the reason why my favorite is The Prisoner of Azkaban is because that is the film in which I started to get closer to the age of Harry mm. Potter and like Hermione and Ron. So I felt like just like more like I got it. I was like I was like this you could got be it. me essentially. You got it. They're so mean. I get it. All right. Any other Time to roast star <laughs> yeah, time to roast our, our, our Instagram followers. Okay, well, our so friends. we have some top fours, and then yeah. we also have just have some favorite movies. Um, do we want to do ASP first, or do we want to? Yeah, let's do ASP. So <laughs> we have have we have some submissions from um, ASP. If you don't know what ASP is, uh, it's the Associated uh, Student Productions. They create like the events on campus, and we want to talk to them. And they're also movie buffs, and they saved sent us their some of them sent mm-hmm. us their top four. Uh, so the first one we have. We're going to say best for last. Oh. Best for last. Best for last meaning, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was like, I'm just doing it in the order they texted me. Um, okay, so Daniela sent in her movie review, and her top four is Surf's Up, Napoleon Dynamite, oh. Nacho Libre, and Coco. Ooh. Ooh. Solid top four. Ooh. Yeah, that's really good. Just solid top four. I mean, I think everyone in the world can agree that Surf's Up is an amazing film. Surf's Up or Happy Feet? That's the real Surf's question. Surf's Up. Or March of the Penguins. Surf's Up. I've never seen March of the Penguins. It's a documentary. Surf's Up. <laughs> About real penguins. <laughs> yeah, well, Surf's Up wins. <laughs> um, Napoleon Surf's Dynamite, up. awesome. I watched, after like eighth grade, like there there was a thing in my middle school where we'd watch a movie at the movie theater and we all chose Napoleon Dynamite and that's what nice. I did every time. Napoleon Dynamite has colored what I think of when I think of Idaho. Yeah. Is it Idaho? Mm-hmm. 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 I was wow. always told I that was everybody always told me that I would really like Napoleon Dynamite for some, and I watched it, and then I was like, "This is funny, but it isn't like insane." Also, the cart there was a cartoon afterwards mm-hmm. on F- Fox or something, and it was so funny, yeah. and it was only on for like a year, and I, no one watched it. That's kind of like, <laughs> but I love like Ten Things I Hate About You. There was like there's a, a cartoon. Oh. No, there was a TV yeah. show oh. uh, version of it, and no one watched also it. Make more movie. TV show versions of movies. That That's should come true. back. Nacho Libre. Um, Very good. Love Jack Black. Not my favorite Jack Black. Not movie. my favorite Jack. Not my favorite Jack, Jack, Jack Black movie. School, School of Rock. Of, or Kung Fu Panda. No, nope, School of Rock. <sighs> I love Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> I touched your kids. And I think they touched me too. <laughs> that one of the best lines ever. That is a fantastic movie. I think I rated that on my. Uh, I think I rated that on Nectar Letterbox. of the Gods tier movie. Yeah. That's what it was. And then finally, Coco, which so good. is a fantastic film. The colors. The colors, the, the story s- makes me cry, honestly. Like, it just makes me sob. It makes me cry too. Mama Coco. When, when he's like running back and he starts falling and becoming the leaves. A lot of these movies, um, the cry movies, I have seen once and like adored and then never watched again because I'm too scared mm-hmm. that they're going to make me cry. No, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm afraid they're going to make me sob. Movie I saw recently for the second time that changed my opinion, Zootopia. I, huh? That <laughs> movie is about <laughs> drugs. Oh. And it was so crazy. Did it make I, you cry? No, it didn't make me cry. It like no, I was like I, you said I don't want to watch it again. Because, oh, and you don't want to watch I, it I again. I didn't want to watch <laughs> okay. it again. And then someone started singing the song from it, and I was like, I want to watch Zootopia. I watch Zootopia. I watched it, and I was like, this movie is like, I love that movie. It's really good, but like it has like a message in it that in a, that at the time I did not understand. Nick Wilde. Nick Wilde. I am coming for you. Jason <laughs> Bateman, I am coming for you. <laughs> Me and Abby like got some love some about. actors. Last year we Justin had a Jason Siegel phase. Jason Siegel, mm. Jason Bateman, yeah. Justin Long, Justin Long, and <laughs> Justin Long if you're if you're Justin watching Long this. if you're watching this, <laughs> please we love you. Hit, hit us up. up. <laughs> <laughs> Be on the podcast. Um, All right, Daniela, I, I give that a four four point five out of five. Yeah, your choices like were really good. inoffensive. Also, like mm-hmm. th- th- you're just like. Everybody likes these Everybody movies. Likes those movies. They're really, really funny. But also, they're just also good movies. Yeah. Yeah. Objectively. Objectively, objectively good movies. movies. And objectively, like, they bring doesn't joy. doesn't have to be an opinion. Mm. 
I agree. You can just be good. Uh, okay, and then next is Noah. Noah sent in. Um, let's have let's have Tim do this. These are right. like kind of Tim's vibes. <laughs> Tim's vibes. Okay, <laughs> Noah. Oh my god. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> Three movies I like very much are Andre Tarkovsky's Stalker, David Lynch's Twin Peaks Fire Walk with Me, Ooh. and David Cronenberg's Crimes of the Future. Um, do you really like these movies? <gasps> or are you just like, uh, it's, are these fun? Are these fun to watch? David Lynch is good. I like I've it. seen two of them. I've seen Stalker and Fire Walk with Me, and David Lynch mm-hmm. is good, but Fire Walk with Me is just really hard to watch. David Bowie's in it, though. That's fun. Ooh, nice. Um, yeah. Stalker is my brother's favorite movie. It's also like four hours long. I've never um, heard of it before. Um, I'm going to give this, what are we doing, out of ten? Out of, out of five. five. Out of five, like letterbox. Letter box. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll give you a three out of five because I'd like to talk about movies with you, but I don't know if I'd let you pick. You seem like you know oh. what you're talking about. Yeah. That's that's awesome. Awesome. yeah, I don't know if I'd let you pick if we're having David movie night. Cronenberg? Because it's a, it's if a you're new having David a movie Cronenberg night with your friends, you want to You're not watching some... Stalker. No. You're not watching Stalker. No, you're watching Prisoner of Azkaban. Or Zootopia. Or Eclipse. You're watching Zootopia and well, wait. zooming in on can the I, guy. Can I just say, here's, an animal. Here, here's, my, here's my take, okay? On Zootopia? Double, two double features, all right? You can choose. Human Centipede and Lemonade Mouth. And then you can call it Human Mouth, kind of like Barbenheimer. Human Mouth Night. Yeah. Oh, my God. Second one. We should do that. <laughs> second, <laughs> yeah. second one. Tusk, Radio Rebel. So I'm just going to put that out That one doesn't have there. a fun name, though. Radio Tusk. I can't, Tusk. Wait, I can't Tusk watch Rebel. Radio Rebel. The movie's awesome. I don't like it. And and someone once told me that I they rem, I reminded them of her. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what a shot. No, they said they said your job and you as a person. Oh, oh I Wait, see. Like, but saying and you as a person, <laughs> that's so mean. No, they they go, you do that with your the thing with your hair a lot. And I was like, Oh, what? Ooh. That's so, Debbie Ryan. Not yeah, have you ever talked? Yeah, I was gonna say, never talked to them again. Ryan. No. Okay. All the right. Next one is Sharla. Sharla gave us four movies. She's out of my league. What's your number? A monster in Paris and Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> I haven't Automatic seen any of these. five for Five Nights at Freddy's. I haven't seen any of these. I haven't seen any five of for these. Five Nights at Freddy's. Matthew Lloyd's and Five Nights at Freddy's. Though, <laughs> so, so Tim gives an automatic five out of five. five. Why not? I've heard of She's Out of My League, but I haven't seen it. I haven't Let's look up a picture. We might we might know. Movies. I haven't seen Wait, it, what are the two middle ones? I guess uh, you're looking Monster at Monster in Paris. I like the name. Midnight in Paris. And, oh, I've seen that, but I didn't like it. I haven't seen and it. And What's Your Number? What's your this number? is She's Out of My League. I know that movie. I know that I movie. scroll by it a lot on Netflix, but I, I never watch it. I also scroll by it, scroll by it a lot on Netflix. The it's, algorithm it's just, loves it. You know what? <laughs> it's a movie that I've never watched, but if I was desperate... I might. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that guy's really funny in. He's really uh, funny in uh the one with the, about the end of the world. Yeah. Oh, Jay Bearchell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jay, yeah, Jay that's a, that's a really good that's a really good movie. Great yeah. Writer too. Michael, Sarah, and Rihanna. We oh need a we need a classic movie. Back, like I feel like this is such an early two thousands thing. Co- like comedy groups. Like I feel like there's one now on SNL. I don't know if you please guys don't just, destroy. please don't destroy. They're kind of having it. Nepo uh, babies. Like y- yeah, like but like Jason Siegel, Seth. Rogan, mm-hmm. like they all had a group in the early two thousands, and then like they're all in like knocked mm. up and like um, Jonah Hill. And this yeah, is forty, yeah. like the Freaks and Geeks group. Yeah, and oh, yeah. and like I also have that on DVD. That's a good, good. TV mm-hmm. show to own a DVD. And like I feel like that's like something we should bring back. We should have comedian groups again that are like all in movies mm. together because that was like, like a, a comedian funny. Group. We car. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We're not. I'm <laughs> just kidding. All right. <laughs> so the next we have Rachel, and Rachel actually for ASP is the um, film event coordinator. So Rachel, High uh, Rachel left a comment, and Rachel says, "I actually have the best opinions because <laughs> I'm the film's coordinator, of course. so I win." And Rachel's top four are uh, Little Miss Sunshine, oh, yeah. Rosemary's Baby, <sighs> House, and Everything Everywhere All at Once. Mm. 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 Five Rosemary's five. Baby. I haven't seen Rosemary's Whoa. Baby. But Scary. I don't like that. That's awesome. No, that's cool. Little Miss Sunshine what was the is first fantastic. One? Oh, Little Miss Sunshine. Little fantastic. Miss Sunshine. Who was that directed by again? I don't remember. Ooh. Steve Carell. Like Probably. <laughs> is Steve Carell and Tony Collette. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> but Classic it's a very, duo. like, it's a good movie. It's such a good Speaking movie. Speaking of Tony Collette, Hereditary, anyone? So anyone? Good. Nicole, no. So, no. <laughs> so good. I won't ever watch that movie again. I think this is a four out of five. Uh, yeah, 
I haven't seen all Because I haven't them. seen some of but, them. Yeah. But we're qualified to do this. Okay. And then, so the last one, um, and this person has asked that we ask that you go and berate them. Oh. Nicole from ASP, uh, a close friend of ours. Friend of the uh, show. Friend of the show. Nicole is at open mic night every Tuesday. And Nicole has asked that if you have comments, um, you go and talk to her. Say to her face. She said that to me. She said, I would like everyone to know that I would like to be talked uh, to okay. about my movies. Also, so. I, I think we should have to follow that too for any criticisms we have oh, yeah. right here on the mm-hmm. podcast. We talk have to, to also us. repeat it to her face. Yes. Nicole would like to be to her face talk to about her opinions on these movies um and you can find nicole <laughs> at open mic night every tuesday in all right Underground coffee house. what's the top four <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. okay i'm being edged right now yeah i need to know okay. so the top four they're crazy <laughs> paul blart mall cop <laughs> I mean, no that's uh, i'm gonna I'm my gonna dad was a mall cop whoa Yo. i learned that this weekend now beautiful boy oh whoa <laughs> what a t- turn harry potter and the half-blood prince I mean, nah. And nope. Nope is good. Nope's fine. And I, pre knowing Nicole's list beforehand, mm-hmm. personally, I'm going to give it, I think, a 3.5 out of 5. I the agree. chaos in the first two picks is just like. <laughs> <laughs> Paul yeah. Mockop, actually kind of good. Paul Blair Mockop, Mock and then like today super from, left turn to the saddest movie of today all time. Today, from a friend while talking about Nicole's top four with Nicole. Um, found that Paul Blart Mall Cop is actually a like complete copy of a different movie. Like they copied the plot from a different movie. Honestly, that tracks. Like Kevin that James. makes sense. Kevin James was just um, like, I saw this movie, I really liked it, I'm gonna be it. No, mm-hmm. I'm him. I think that like Harry Potter and the Half Blood Prince, Nope and Beautiful Boy are all kind of like like Paul Blart Mall Cop Mall Cop is a crazy movie to have associated with those three movies. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> like <laughs> No, it's not. I think it's perfectly fine. <laughs> it's just like range. not in the same range. Nicole's got range. Okay? Exactly. Nicole's got range. Um, yeah, that's so saying. that's Nicole's. Um, I mean, I actually think that's a five out of five, personally. There I think go. it's a three out of five. <laughs> three, three, I'm point, three point five out of five. Three point five out of five. Is that the one with uh, Timothy oh, Chalamet? Timothy and Chalamet and is addicted to drugs. Yeah. Um, it's uh, too sad. It is very sad. Don't make me. Don't make me sad. Mm-hmm. Timothy wait, Chalamet at the beginning of his career, sad movies. Love a sad movie. Does anyone have like just a really big hot take? About just movies, because now I'm like, I want someone to come uh, up to me and talk to me about my decision. Well, you guys know my, my hot take. What is it? I hate the Polar Express. Oh yeah, yeah. That's not a hot take. It I is hate a it hot take. It, some people really, really love it. They're stupid. They're dumb. <laughs> well, because okay, so let me explain. Let me get on my soapbox. That movie is about like children being kidnapped, mm. clearly, and like the fact that Tom Hanks played five different roles isn't impressive. It's scary. If you've seen the photos of him doing the CGI work, it's terrifying. And the so- hot chocolate song, I've never liked it. And then at the end, Santa like and the elves run around and try to get the kid. Like, mm. the, what was the point of having the kids come visit the North Pole if you were gonna try to keep them as hostages? I like do. A fun time. I do just have one thing to say about that, though, in defense of the Polar Express um, and all the good people that love P- P- Polar Express, even though I just called them stupid. Um, <laughs> the scene where he rings the bell. And the parents can't hear it, but the kids can hear the bell because they believe in Santa. That's cute. Pretty sweet. It's, it's sweet. Yeah. But it's been done before. Mm, true. I don't know. Probably. Just watch Santa Claus. The With Santa Tim Claus? Allen? Okay, I don't like Tim uh, Allen. I don't support Tim Allen, but I like <laughs> Santa Claus. We support Santa Claus. We like Santa Claus. We like Santa Claus. Saint Nick. <laughs> we like Santa Claus. We're on the nice list. Um, now we have... Wait, wait. It, Abby's Abby's hot, hot taste. Yeah. I've been, yeah, I mean, you guys already know this, but I hate The Shining. I actually hate it. Also, mm. a topic me and Abby have debated. Brief, brief we, actually, podcast, actually, yeah. we actually talk about movies like a lot in the mm. office. Yeah, we do and, love like, to just turn it We love into to like talk. chat about movies. Yeah. So this is just like us doing it's that. It's just <laughs> a self serving podcast for us. Anyway. Um, I don't know. I, I hate The Shining, and I'm just going to I'm gonna keep it there. Mm. I, I'm trying to think of any other hot takes, but you can say yours. Let me think. I, I feel like I have a few, but now I'm just completely blanking. Yeah. Movies were better 30 years ago. Whoa. I think generally. You know what? Okay. Crazy. Actually, here's my hot take. I have realized I don't like 70s, and well, it depends on the genre of 80s movies, but the ones where they're just like walking and talking and not doing anything for <laughs> an hour and a half. Like, for example, I mean, it was Halloween recently, and I watched uh, Halloween for the first time, and mm. I hated it. Oh, that's a good one. It's like just Halloween. so like. 
slow, and I know it's because it was a different time of movies mm-hmm. and movie making, but it's just, that's, and I also watched Friday the 13th, also slow, I'm like, where's the gore, where's the You gotta action? get to Friday the 13th, like, six. <sighs> and you're at my apartment, we were watching, like, the seventh oh, Friday right. the 13th, yeah, yeah. and it was, yeah. it's I, all gore. I have another hot take. Yeah, yeah. that was my hot take. There hasn't been a good, like, as a lover of rom-coms, there hasn't been a good rom-com made in, like, ten years. Hmm. Like, mm. it's just not the same anymore. Yeah. Like, I, it, they keep trying to capture the magic of what was, and mm. it's never going to be good. Like, That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. just not the same anymore. Like, Harry, when Harry Met Sally could not be made right now, the vibes aren't there. Like, and there was just, like, an Harry. air of, like, not having cell phones that really right. made. I was going to say, <laughs> I think, like, digital social That's media. True. Really That's social true. Social media, like, changes the way that, like, I don't. It's not I the same. It's not the same. I feel like movies are either 100% serious now or 100% trying to be funny or mm-hmm. 100% a cash grab. Mm. Um, and there's not really much crossover. And I feel like it needs to be a little bit of a crossover for it to be a good rom-com. Because it has to be good as a comedy and it also has to be good as a serious right. romance. And I don't think that middle no, ground really exists I anymore. I haven't found that in this a while. This isn't necessarily a rom-com, but kind of No Hard Feelings. I know either of you have not watched it. But that, I, I would say that movie's actually pretty okay. good in battles. And we are talking, we were talking about but like the raunchy comedy is coming mm-hmm. back a little the bit. The raunchy mm-hmm. comedy is coming back, but I'm talking about a rom-com that isn't necessarily raunchy. I'm talking about a rom-com that's for the hopeless romantic. Well, I think maybe the comedy coming back is a good step. Right, yes. It is It is a good eventually. step. I would say a most recent rom-com that I really like is the first To All the Boys I've Loved Before movie. I really mm. like that movie. Mm. I think that's pretty good. Set It Up is also really good. Oh, Set it's It Up like is Deutsch great. And but Glenn Powell. I couldn't get but into that. But it's a Netflix movie. And I don't they know both are. I, mm. They both are. But I don't know if I like... Netflix like is really hit or miss with their movies. Yeah. Yeah. It's I just either think really good or really bad. Those ones are the oh, better ones. Netflix had another one... And it's like a little bit older, I think. It's maybe not even the last five years. Oh, um, it's someone great. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, that movie is so it. good. Ugh. It has a fantastic cast. That was an early Netflix I watched original. that. Yeah, I watched that the day after I broke that's, up with my first girlfriend. That's a movie that you should Got watch me. if you want to cry. Mm-hmm. Personally, it, I don't like that movie. Oh, you're so wrong. So you probably wrong. watched it when you were like an adult or Yeah, something. no, you have to. <laughs> you yeah. have to but have you weren't like, 13? You have to have like a <laughs> lot like... Really, I don't know. That movie's so good. I mean, I like the Lakeith Stanfield parts. He I love thing. when He's they cool play guy. Oxford Comma by or no, it's it's a it's a Vampire Weekend song and it's like and it's in the party scene and it's and Mansard Roof. They play Mansard Roof in the party scene and it like and that scene is just fantastic and there's like the lighting. It's just it's, it's so a like great early twenty tens like mm-hmm. hipsters yeah. doing their. Sad hipster thing. I don't know. You know what movie is absolutely fantastic that will shatter your heart? That kind of reminds me of that Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Mm-hmm. That movie. That's oh my one. god. I refuse to watch I, that it's movie so again. So <laughs> heartbreaking, but like beautiful. Oh my god. Yeah, you just gotta watch it for yourself. I watched it. Over watch the it summer. once. And watch then, it once and, and never watch it, it again. There, yeah. there are some go movies that you should only watch once mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because, like, truly, you don't need to go through that again. <laughs> truly. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so now we have movies. We asked you guys, and we were like, hey, what's your favorite movie? And, yeah, we got some answers. Got some answers. Um, lots of duplicate answers, mm-hmm. but that's okay because, you know what, a good movie is a good movie, and everyone should like what it. What would you say was the most common answer? Um, everything, 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 all once, or uh, we also got a lot of um, Fantastic Mr. Fox, mm-hmm. and uh, Heathers seen. was a Heathers. duplicate. Did you I say like After Sun? Mm-hmm. After oh, Sun. Oh, uh, uh, lots of someone who shall not be named did not submit a real movie, um, but that's fine. He's coming up on a baseball podcast. <laughs> that is just going to be <laughs> no, me and him talking about the Mariners. No, he will not come up on a baseball podcast. <laughs> so we are. Let's. I'm. We'll go through these, and um, we we some of these are movies that are our favorite movies. So we've already talked about them, and we know you know our opinions. Um, the first one is Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Good movie. Very fantastic movie. Should we say oh, who said Oh, them? oh, oh my God. Oh my God. I'm trying to remember the, the director's name. I know this. He's literally on my wall. They're making the directors on your wall? A or not the director, but like another movie that oh, I okay. Ed, <laughs> shit. It's not just Edgar a picture Wright. of him. Edgar, Edgar Wright. Wright made that. Because I have Baby Driver on my uh, They're making wall, but, a um good song. Animated sh- series oh, yeah. out all of the that same original actors. with all the same original actors, and I think that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. I also <laughs> Mr. Fox. Um, love Miss Michael Sarah and great cast, great cast. Wait, they're making it for Mr. Fox or for no, a... no, no, for Scott Pilgrim. Oh, okay, okay. He said fantastic, and I was trying to be funny, and 
Abby messed it up. Good one, Abby. Good one, Abby. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Scott Pilgrim versus the World. I'm going to say it's a five, honestly. Good. Good movie. Yeah. And then we have Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Also good movie. Also good movie. Many people said this. It's a common opinion. I think it's a newer movie, and I also... It is. I think it deserves the hype it is getting. Ki Huey Kwan, amazing. Awesome. A great comeback. Yes. Like Oh, that's right. Comeback yeah. kid. I forgot mm-hmm. about that. Just like... Inspiring. Yeah, I'd love to see it. I watched that movie of him receiving that Oscar, and I cried many times. Yeah, like the mm-hmm. film. Like, it's yeah, so I cried. Good. I was, I was. And really him sad. and Steven Spielberg. I was just. Yeah, like, him and Brendan Fraser. Speaking mm-hmm. of, la- you know what? Tw- I'm gonna say is 2022, 2023 movie year, the year of the Pretty comeback good. kid, because I, Brendan Fraser. I will say too, movies are just back in general. I think after the pandemic, it like really just took a hit off. But like, mo- there's been movies after movies, and I think mm-hmm. ever since the Barbie movie, like, and now we're out of the SAG after strike. We're so back, mm-hmm. and we're so back. We're gonna about. I think we're about to get into a period of time where it's gonna be like a even more back mm-hmm. to back. Because you know what, people sat in their houses for a while. Actors did, and now they're ready. They're Maybe ready they've stewed. The they've stu- they've yeah. been cooking. Maybe they've, they've been, been they've been doing a little pondering. Pondering. About pondering, the quality yes. of movies they're making, or like um, just little stories. Real quick, is do you guys have a movie that's coming out that you're not looking forward to? Because I have one. I have a movie I'm looking forward to. That's I have a lot stupid. that I'm looking forward. To. I have a movie. I'm I have not one that I'm looking forward, forward to. to in a very stupid way. <laughs> Same. It? It's Napoleon. Okay. It's gonna oh. be like four hours long, and I'm probably gonna like. No, that's fair. Go I, in there. That now. movie. Looks yeah, good. I'm talking to two history majors too, so you guys get it. <laughs> we love. Napoleon. I'm kind I of. I don't love Napoleon. I'm kind of um, excited for the Thanksgiving horror movie that's gonna come oh, out. Oh yeah. They've never done that before. I love it. I. I'm not excited for one movie to come out, and it is um, Wonka. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand why we had to remake Johnny Depp's Wonka and not Gene Wilder's Wonka. Is that really? I thought it was just yeah. its own version. No, it's 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 a prequel to the Johnny Depp one. He to my understanding, hair. to my understanding, I, in the term of the Wonka verse, <laughs> as someone recently called it in front of me, That's and I awful. felt very uncomfortable by that. <laughs> um, like Gene Wilder more, <sighs> and um, Jeremy Allen White is like totally a young him. version he, yeah. of totally. Like it could have worked. Mm-hmm. They could have done it. He's a young jacked version of Gene Wilder. That. Mm-hmm. I don't have any movies I'm excited for, but I do have a TV show <gasps> that I started watching that I really like. What is it? The Buccaneers. The it's what? The Buccaneers. It's uh, on Apple TV, and it is about like these women who are from uh, New York in like the 1800s, and they go to England to court so they can like get married. Sweet. And it's just historical drama. Like it's really good. I don't know. Pretty setting. I think mm. I'm looking forward. Uh, speaking of Jeremy Allen White, there's like a movie with him and Zac Efron coming out soon. Oh right, they play like what, bodybuilders. Iron Claw. Yeah. Something yeah. Like that, yeah. Yeah. The the tra- the 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 advertisements for that have been very interesting. Mm. One where he was just like dragging <laughs> just barbecue sauce across his face. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. All right. What are the other movies? Okay. So next, National Treasure. <laughs> Hey, Lily likes We're that there. one. I get it. I get it. <laughs> no, it is man. not. It's Lily's it burner not. account. <laughs> I actually don't have a burner account. Um, and then we have When Harry Met Sally. Was that Shana who wrote that? It was not. Was it Lily? Oh. It was no. It was not. Lily's got a lot of bots. I feel like we need to like chat out the people that put in their okay. So um, <laughs> probably Kellen, your opinions on Scott Pilgrim and everything everyone at once. Correct. We love awesome. you. Awesome. Uh, National Treasure and When Harry Met Sally. National Treasures Annie G. Davis underscore it's good I get it the plot it's good and then uh Mr. Darcy underscore said when Harry met Sally mm. Mr. Darcy From didn't Pride say and Pride and Prejudice, and Prejudice? no I know That's I was betray- confused by betraying that the name it came in last night when I was like waiting for people to say <laughs> I do I we're not talking about that one no 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 Lamplight Olivia Lamplight Human Centipede <laughs> I, She's invited to awesome. d- yeah. Lemonade Pete or whatever. Oh, oh. All of human you are mouth. invited to human, human. <laughs> centipede <laughs> mouth. Lemon, <laughs> lemon mouth. Centipede lemon mouth. Lemon mouth. Wait, human ce- Oh, wait, shit. Human, human mouth. mouth. <laughs> All of you're invited to human mouth human screening. Human mouth, mate. You're ready for uh, Rachel from ASP Films. Can you please get this started? I've been on this for like the past <laughs> two months. I'm not even kidding. My friends are so angry. Centipede mouth. I kind of like centipede Our mouth. Our friend yeah. Riley over at. Um, the rec center mm. said Wally, and to that I Very say, good. you are hoping for a future which I don't want to live in. Wally. <laughs> that was, Thanks. dude, are you like, the justification of me saying something crazy is you being Wally. Uh-huh. 
I don't want to end up like in what Wally society. And every time I watch that movie, that's what I think. Of. Only if I get to be Wally. It's a good movie. Yeah. Very good movie. Eve. Eve. Eva. Yeah. Tim, what the hell? <laughs> you I'm sorry. Just do it. You're just cosplaying right I'm now. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, okay. Next, Claire Cabe said the Lego movie. Okay. I watched that movie on the airplane like last year and I was laughing unironically. That movie is so good. I love Legos. You, whoever, you but... are the one that can be a master builder. Okay. I like to laugh ironically. I like airplanes. Lego Batman. You don't laugh. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> so this is the uh, last podcast me and Abby are going to be on together. Navia, Navia said La La Land. <laughs> yeah. You know what's up. Um, you know what's up. And then Melody Snow mm-hmm. underscore dot underscore so had two answers. Um, the half of it, which I've never seen, but I wanted to see. It's a rom com on Netflix. It's a rom com on Netflix. Okay. Um, and then Call Me by Your Name. I watched that. When How I was like do you 16. feel about the past two years? <laughs> <laughs> Army Hammer. Do you have opinions uh, on that? I never saw that movie. Army it's... Hammer. No, I know, I know, I know. I think, I ah. think. It, Whatever. it depending on how you feel about age gaps, that's where you are with that movie. You know, oh. like the rating. Because yeah. I think at the time I liked it, but then I didn't realize how gross the age gap was. Mm. And then I can appreciate the movie like outside of that. I read can most of all, the book and it was like a little mm. gross. Can we all say though that in 2019 when TikTok was at its like true peak and that one oh, part yeah. of the movie with Timothy Chalamet, Melanie that Martinez. edit yep. was mm-hmm. going crazy. Mm-hmm. So good. Yeah. Okay, so next is Danny. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, but Tim, that's okay. You don't need to see. I don't want to. Yeah. Next is Danny. Danny said Ghostbusters. Danny from the baseball podcast? Danny from the PC. I think um, that one's pretty good. The baseball podcast. Not my favorite, but. Ghostbusters is classic. It is classic. That's like your dad. No, it's it's your dad's favorite movie. That's Danny's dad's favorite movie. I'm going to put this out there. Maybe Danny's Halloween costume next year should be a Ghostbuster if he loves it. Which one, though? Which one? I don't know. Danny loves a good Halloween costume. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Heather's is the next one. And we actually got two Mm -hmm. people who said it. Underscore Lupe. Underscore Ven Goss and then Emily uh, from ASP. Emily from ASP. Both said Heather's. Okay, wait. And Heather's feels like a very I was just in high school favorite movie to have. Mm. Or in the past four years, I was in high school. Yeah, yeah. Really, really, really resonated. <laughs> you? I was in high okay, I was Not like... that I was gonna blow up anything. <laughs> but wait, you resonated with the guy? No. Oh, okay. That's what it mean. You made it sounded like. Who do you resonate with? The story? Winona. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Veronica. Yeah. Veronica. I. But then it like fades after over time. It's like mm-hmm. I haven't. It's been like in high the angst, right? Now. The teenage angst. Yeah. I would say. I well, feel adult angst. Now. I also yeah. think there was a moment when, like, I mean, I know that all of us weren't in high school together, like at the same time I for very wish. long, but like, but like <laughs> there was like a year we had in common, and I do remember there being a year of high school where like, '90s movies were like making a huge comeback. We're all the same age though. Okay, so we were in high school for similar times. I don't remember that sometimes. Um, anyway, there was a moment in high school where 90s movies were making like a little bit of a comeback, and I remember watching like Heather's, 16 Candles, um, like Pretty in Pink, a lot. John Hughes. John oh. Hughes movies. They were just making, they were having their moment. All those and ABC Family movies. Reruns. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And so I do think there was a moment where I would probably have been like, I love Heather's. Not so many Heather's anymore. was my favorite movie for a little bit. That's a really yeah. interesting thing to know I about know. you. I don't think I had the teenage angst for that. Uh, How I do you feel about it. Heather's the musical? A- awesome. Avoided. <laughs> I don't like it. What? No comment. I do. I like okay, musicals. I the thought song it was good. Candy, I, you know what ruined it for me? I'm going to reveal myself right the now. The lack of Winona Ryder and Christmas no, Slater. Um, and their lightning chemistry. <laughs> I didn't watch a lot of this show, but I watched some of this show. And by some, I mean like probably like four episodes. And I oh, do remember show? watching the Riverdale episode where they did <laughs> Heather's. Mm, 10 out of 10. I Honestly, I hated it so much. I could, if I could put an episode of TV on my top four, <laughs> Riverdale when they do Heather's. Doesn't get better. Veronica doing candy shop. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's like stuck There's, in my head. Okay, I'm an avid musical. I, I do like musicals on the down low. Which is so interesting because you're, I mean, you... But you're not the theater kid. Thanks for whispering that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll bleep it out. Yeah. Yeah, please do, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, like, I was a theater kid. I did mm-hmm. musicals. So I did you would think out of both of us, 
I would be the one who yeah. would be the musical fanatic, but I actually mostly hate them. I can really. I actually like musicals. I like them. Mm -hmm. I like. I have a select few that I really enjoy, but like mm -hmm. I think just because I was a part of so many. Yeah, I was gonna I say maybe pissed. I have like a good amount of distance. Yeah, from it. Because yeah. I was never a theater kid, but I would I would go to the plays in high school. Mm -hmm. And I review. love mm -hmm. love to love to go to a play. Um, you like I love them. a play. I didn't. In, but, but like, like musical plays, and also I think that just transferred because they're like all kind of the same as the plays, mm -hmm. and a lot of them yeah. are based off of the plays. Yeah. Um, I just love seeing the guys sing. I didn't like Newsies. Spring Awakening is a fantastic musical. Phantom of the Opera. And I just the Newsy. You like the Phantom Opera? Oh yeah. <laughs> Newsies has the musical, not the movie version, with Christian Bale. I think is okay. That's a, that's a, Tim, you're throwing some crazy opinions out there. I have okay. some crazy opinions. I'm a crazy um, guy. One underscore more underscore fish said house 1977, which we've already talked about. Good opinion. Um, I don't know what that is. But lots of people Somebody said Tim, everything you know everywhere all at once. Somebody so Tim, you if you said everything everywhere all at once, we agree. We see you. Uh, Spence, SP dot N-C-E-R underscore said eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. Spencer. So good. Spencer. Jim yeah. Carrey in more serious roles is really, he's really good. I think he's crazy now. I have a hot take that I've been holding in. Is he crazy? And that it's I hate yeah. Jim Carrey. Oh. He makes really good art now. He's retired. He makes very good art. I just, I don't hate, I, I think like as an actor, he is just freaks me out. But mm. as a person, he's probably fine. I think he's funny. The Favorite Grinch Jim Carrey movie, Mr. Popper's It's just Penguins. crazy. Like he held that face. Mr. Popper's Penguins. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, throwing out weird things. <laughs> I like that movie. I agree. I like Mr. Popper's Penguins. Okay. Uh, I don't know how... People, Mine's the mask. People Favorite need Jim Carrey to like, start making better Instagram handles. Whoa! Um, well, that's okay. Good, that's a good take. Tyler. Cooney said, Inception, 100%. When mm. I saw that movie, I had my jaw dropped for about 30 minutes. Boring. Are you a business major by any chance? Do you dream? Do you have dreams? Do you like dreams? Are you, do you like sharing are your you dreams a, with your friends? Are you a Killian Murphy fan? Are you a Christopher Nolan fan? That's what uh, I thought. <laughs> boring. Um, <laughs> and then Ba.lol said Pitch Perfect. Good. That is yes. a musical movie I would do. Actually, you know what? Friday night, post tide pooling, walking up to the car, I, me and my friend, from memory, Saying the whole riff off. Hell scene. yeah! Pitch Perfect is awesome. Pitch my Perfect mom's is favorite. Awesome. My mom's favorite series of movies. We would watch them. We watched the Fast and Furious movies on Easter for a long time <laughs> because my dad and brother would go biking because I don't know if they like that. And then we ran out of Fast and Furious movies after seven because they got really bad. Mm -hmm. um, oh, so like you like, you'd watch one, not all of them. I thought you saying watch all of them. Yeah, okay. we'd watch one every Easter, and we went through them all. And then they got so shitty after the seven that we had to switch to Pitch Perfect, and I started having better Easters. Nice. Yeah, always Pitch a good time Perfect with mom. Is a really good series. I think oh my that God, yeah. all of them are fun to watch. Um, just a good time. It's a good time. I have Lots not, of singing. I have not seen the series that came out though. I have not of what? Perfect. It's series? called like it's about bumper and he like goes Oh, off. oh. Really funny though. Mm -hmm. Really good. Anna Kendrick. Anna Kendrick. Anna Kendrick. We love you. The scene, with, the scene with Snoop Dogg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. The announcers at the uh at, Oh at the so funny. Contests. Oh, so oh funny. Elizabeth Elizabeth Banks. Banks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that Jason Effie Bateman? Trinket? No, it's I'm not. I'm thinking of Dodgeball. Oh, I yeah, love that movie. Right. Sorry, it's awesome. Justin Long, Despar Boys with a Z said Pacific Rim, but only the first one. I heard that one's pretty good. I've heard that's pretty it. good. I have not seen it. Um, Flynn seven seven dot seven said Pineapple Express. <laughs> we love you, Flynn. I watched the first twenty minutes of that, and I I couldn't get through the whole thing. I watched that in Orange County. I don't like the Frank. I only like one of the Francos. I don't like James. I like Dave. Love Dave. That's fair. I really like now. I I really like uh, now you see me. Mm. Poodle, whoa. It's a fun I movie. I forgot I watched that movie. It's a fun it's movie. Good. There's three of them. Whoa. Put that out there. Okay. Uh, Aaron at uh, OCE. The OCE. Heck yeah. Love Aaron. Said Jesus Christ Superstar. We're Haven't back to that musical. It, mm. It's okay. I heard good things. Um, Cam's Castle said After Sun with Paul Mescal. That's I weird. know for a fact that this is a movie that someone I know, you like this is their I Need to Cry movie. So I've never seen it because I already have so many of those. I think that might be my next cry. I might mm. throw on After Sun because I have yet to watch that. 
but I really, really want to. Same. And I love me some pet many Paul Mezcal. Paul Mezcal, I'm coming for you. Many say it's their <laughs> cry movie. Paul Mezcal, Paul Mezcal we're, we're coming, coming for you. you. We had a very interesting conversation about Paul Mezcal earlier. <laughs> did we? We did in the office. We did, and then the we're not going to tell you because we're going to gatekeep. Okay, next movie. Gatekeep. Uh, huh. Jack of all dot traits said nice. Top Gun Maverick. And to that I say, yeah. so you like U.S. military propaganda? Nah, that's that's a fun movie. That's Maverick, good. Yeah, it was it was okay. It's so everyone good. said it was really good. I did watch it, and I thought it was good. Better than this first one. Dude. Maybe that's a hot take. It's I better did. than the first one. Yeah. And when Tom Cruise is in the bar and yeah. he's looking at mm-hmm. that guy's son, and it's Miles Teller, and there's flashbacks to the other movies. I'm glad you tier. guys liked mm-hmm. it. It's military propaganda. It probably is, but. <sighs> Probably most movies are. I don't know. Um, the next one, multiple people said it is. Uh, so we'll put both all of their. We'll add them. Uh, Bailey dot Stauf and Ava underscore Cotto underscore Supremacy classic. said Fantastic Mr. Fox. Classic. Also classic. Good movie. Just a good feel good movie. Mm-hmm. I I even like Isle of Dogs. George Clooney. I do too. Really good. Yeah. Very sad for a children's movie, but like. I wasn't lying when I said Wes Anderson doesn't miss. Like, that's all at least good. The end scene of Fantastic Mr. Fox is really good. Mm -hmm. Beach Boys. Another after (laughs) sun. Shout out to the Beach Boys. (laughs) What's up, Madeline? Um, Earthy Dad said Midsummer. And okay, so here's my here's my thing. Um, Midsummer. I've actually never seen it because I don't like horror films or psychological thrillers. But very good. I celebrate. have celebrated the holiday of Midsummer in my life Clean. because my family is Swedish. And a few years ago, I would tell people, I'd be like, I'm going to go celebrate Midsummer," And then they would be like, oh my God, are you going to sacrifice something? And so Midsummer, mm. you know what? Maybe a good movie, but the ramifications that have happened <laughs> after Midsummer for people who celebrate the holiday, not fun. <laughs> because now I have to be like, I don't slaughter anything on this holiday. It's just fun. And we dress up and dance and sing. Ari Aster is awesome. Um, love Florence summer. Pugh, great. Like Florence also great. Jack, the guy that plays the other guy, he's in good stuff. Sing Street, you guys ever seen Sing Street? Oh, <laughs> no. So Irish, seen. also a musical. musical yeah. So good. I heard it's very good. I love. Have you seen? Uh, I guess I haven't seen the Bo is Afraid, but I saw like everything about the Johnsons or whatever that short mm. thing is from Ari Aster. That. That's Ari Aster. You know how to write some horror movies. You you know Isn't how to that, do that. Keep doing it. That, Keep doing it. Uh, no, 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 no. Hereditary, awesome. Uh, next we have IKEA.mp4, and they said Howl's Moving Castle. Oh, got some studio. Is it Ghibli or Ghibli? I always forget. Studio Ghibli. Studio Ghibli. Awesome. I'm surprised no one said anything. As about a that. movie, I think a lot of people don't know that this is a book adaptation. Hmm. Um, I don't know that. Which is an interesting thing. And also, like, anytime someone tells me they're like, Howl's Moving Castle is my favorite like movie. Mm-hmm. I'm always like, oh, that's such a like that's a good that's a book ad- adaptation. And then they're like, oh what? And the other books written by that author are actually better. Cool. Are they novels or are they? They, like... they are novels. They're for children. She writes about like magicians and like oh, magic awesome. within different universes. Oh, that's awesome. Like port. It's very it's very good. Witch Week and Charmed Life are probably my favorite. Hmm. They're very good. They're they're like for teenagers. Do you know the name um, of the author? I can find it. Hmm. I can find it. Christian Bale dubbing the I forgot his name. The the main character in House Moving Castle. Sexy. Sexy. That's all I have to say. And then um, there's a tone it, to this. They podcast. are <laughs> written by Diana Wynn Jones. Oh, okay. yeah, Good Diana Wynn Jones, one of my favorite childhood authors, I would say. Actually, I found her books at the library when I was a kid, and I fell in love. And then I never actually read *Howl's Moving Castle* for a while. And then I was like, eh, I probably should want to read this. And it wasn't as good as the other ones, honestly. Mm. Mine was H. A. Ray, mm. Carrie's nice. George fame. Yeah, there you go. Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson. Uh, so the next movie is from. Millie the Silly 2805. It's Millie Bobby Brown's burner account. Yeah, Suspiria, the original. Oh, I, I just watched that. I don't know what that means. Very good, very scary. You've been watching a lot of scary movies. I've right? been watching, it was Halloween. It was Recently, Halloween. I did, I had a little scary movie kick as I do every year. Mm-hmm. And Suspiria, scary, I creepy. I actually watched a scary movie Good recently. times. I watched that and a movie called Persona, which is also very scary, like back to back. And I had like, a like, I was I wasn't scared of like anything in particular, but I was walking around my apartment just scared of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, it was one of those was... nights where you're like, 
is someone outside of my door? What's that creaking noise? Yeah, like, and it was just like, post-movie. what am I? <laughs> Oh, that's not. Watch. Yeah. <laughs> the scariest but it was like a little combination of both. Mm. So I, I get very like, <coughs> what's outside my door? Because I my in Seattle, I live in like a small cul-de-sac. Mm-hmm. And so, and I used to live on like a really busy street. And so whenever there's like any noise, I'm like, what's there? What's happening? Who's going to kill me? Watch yeah. Cobweb. I just recently watched that. It has Anthony Starr from The Boys in it. I personally, mm-hmm. scary as hell. I recently watched The Nun. And I did not like it. All right. What are the last few things on this list? So the next one is from Zay Z. I can't. Zay Z H E E T Z. Zeets? Zeets. The Big Lebowski. Mm. I heard that one's good. I haven't seen it. It's on my watch list. Good stuff. That's funny. We're going to save what we all know is the best for last. (laughs) Um, Riley the Spider said, The Summit of the Gods. I I don't know what that is. I've never heard of that. Riley. It's interesting. Check it out. We'll get into it. And then last, we have Aislinn Jones <laughs> underscore with what I think might be the best answer and what we all, I believe, can agree on, Twilight. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Listen, that little movie. You don't love the first Twilight movie. There may be something wrong with you. You're not a Washingtonian. If you walk, exactly. you're not a Washingtonian. Um, oh. But she likes oh, Twilight, so we've adopted Twilight. her. <laughs> one. You were adopted. You're a transplant. Yeah. Um, <laughs> If you don't like Twilight and you live in Washington, we like. It's like if you don't, don't like you. ten things I hate about you and live in Washington. Mm. Mm. Tacoma, that, Tacoma. <laughs> am I right? Raven High School, Tacoma Stadium. Um, really no, Stadium High School, Stadium High School. Oh, Stadium High School. That's if very you, breakfast club. <laughs> if you, that was. Thanks. <laughs> Liking Twilight, it it doesn't have to be that you like the books or that you like the plot. It's like for me, I started watching, like I first time I watched Twilight, I was like, this is hilarious. Mm. This is so funny. I love it. It's a mood. And then over time, yeah. I was like, wait, this is kind of good. It's like, it's it's a so vibe. It's good. Also, the blue filter over the first exactly. movie is crazy. Yeah. Like the fact that they didn't put them on the rest of them, shocking to me. I've been to Port Angeles. <laughs> Port Angeles um, Forks. Mm-hmm. Go to Port Angeles, go to Forks. Mm-hmm. Um, fun fact, guys. The house that the Cullens lived in is actually for sale right now. Isn't it in Oregon, right? Or is it, it is. Yeah. yeah, you could live there. <gasps> and the guy that Whoa. the place that Dad went to Western. Yes, I was going to say. Billy Burke mm-hmm. is a Western alum. So if you are a Western <laughs> Shut student up, Billy Burke. and you don't like Twilight, you aren't like repping Western. Billy Burke, Shut come up. on the podcast. Billy yeah, Burke, Billy please Burke. be on the podcast. Billy what Burke, are you doing? I don't know if he has a house in Bellingham. This is where I reveal my stalker side. Well, I, there's no current properties under his name. Oh. <laughs> and Hillary Swain. We'll fly him out. Hillary Swank's a Western alum? No, she oh lived God. in Bellingham, though. Hillary Swank, come on the podcast. Rain Wilson, come on the podcast. Billy you're, Burke. You're, you're from Seattle. Billy Burke. We are coming for you. We are coming for you. <laughs> um. <laughs> and with that, yeah. Um, please, if you have any criticisms, like, can you sh- show As, up d- honestly, show up on campus and punch us in the face right now? Hate on us. Somewhere. But DM us. DM us, or, please. Yeah. If you see us on campus... We would talk to you about these movies. Yeah, always. We have always more, up for movie talk. We have mm-hmm. more opinions, and um, they get worse. <laughs> they get worse. <laughs> Sometimes better. Mostly worse. Well, That's yeah. like when you talk Honestly, to us. And if you, you know what? And if you if you saw this podcast and you thought to yourself, "Well, I don't really love movies, but I love TV," we got opinions with that too. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And with that, basically, the main takeaway of this podcast should be love Twilight. Love and Twilight. all these actors, for we're coming for you, okay? Steve Carell, Jason Siegel, Justin Long, Jason Bateman, Jason Bateman Adam James. Driver, Matthew Lillard, Matthew Lillard, Josh Hutcherson, mm-hmm. Ooh, Robert even... Pattinson. We're coming for you. We are coming for you. Sorry, it was only men. I couldn't think of a woman's name. <laughs> <laughs> Women. Barbie. Greta Gerwig. Greta yeah. Gerwig. <laughs> Anne Hathaway. Sophia Coppola. Zendaya. Yeah. Priscilla Presley. Ooh. I... Sophia? She's dead. She's dead. Rest in peace. R. Rest in R. peace. Bless right. up. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this movie, pretentious film, bro podcast. One I for hope you us. Something. Yeah. Yeah. We hope you learned something today, and I hope, I hope it's not that you hate us. About us yeah. Honestly. But if it is. But if it is. Uh, talk to me about it on campus. Yeah. Pull up. Pull up. <laughs> Pull up. Pull up. Pull up right. to our office. If you can find it. Yeah. Follow us on Letterbox. Follow us on Letterbox. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on, Instagram. Instagram. Follow us on TikTok. Mm-hmm. Find. Follow us on uh, YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. And with further ado, thank you to. Letterbox. Thank you to Letterbox for existing. For letting for us we love you. Like this. Yep. And we will see you in Thank the next you to one. Greta Gerwig. Sometime. Thank you to Greta Gerwig.
Tripping right. on bricks. Tripping on bricks. Tripping on, Bri- <laughs> Tripping on bricks. All right, yeah, clapboard. Ready? Clapboard. Tim. Come on, Tim. Oh, well. <laughs> Three, two, one. Cut. And scene. Sweet. Wavelength is a program of the Associated Students of Western Washington University, and we'd like to thank WWU's Digital Media Center for production support, as well as our music composer, Austin Colwell from Harbor Day. You can find a link to Austin's music in the episode description below.